know that when we fled, um, we, we really couldn't take anything with us. All All we had was um, a few items in terms of clothing, and I understood that we had to pay our way by gold. There were four siblings, including myself that time, and my mother was um, pregnant with, with the, uh, our youngest. And on the fishing boat, from what I understand, no food, water, you're, you're, you're barely making it. and. Um, but from what I understand, we were actually very fortunate, very lucky that that's all that we had to deal with in terms of the, the journey itself, the hardship of being on a cramped, crowded boat and not having food and water. But our days on, on the sea were fairly short uh, compared to once I learned more about other families and their journeys that happened after the, the, the time that we fled the country because we were fortunate enough to leave um, a little bit shortly after the fall of Saigon and at that time then the pirates and all the horrific stories that y you learned about um, people weren't aware yet that there were these boats and fleets and fleets of humans you know um, trying to flee the country and being in the open sea so you know as a family, I don't know if I ever really sat down and, and talked to my parents about it or really asked a lot of questions. Growing up, like I sort of understood, hey, we there was war, we had to flee the country, we had to escape to, to have a better life. Gosh, um, probably my early 20s or something, I, it was, um, I attended a uh, reception in his honor and I was sent by my employer at that time. And I remember then meeting him and just shaking his hand. And I didn't realize how emotional it would be. I remember just kind of losing it. I started crying and I couldn't stop. And it, it, it was the first time I realized, wow, this, this human being has such an amazing effect. And the fact when you think about the, the ray of hope and the ray of sunshine for all these individuals, and uh, Governor Ray, with the play on his name, Ray of Freedom, it was perfect. And so once I shared that with our planning community, they were, committee, they were so excited, and that became our focal point around the theme. And what we did was we, we then um, convened the five different uh, communities that were the influx of refugees at the time. So again, they were Cambodia, um, Vietnam, Thaidom, uh, Laos, and Hmong. And we then worked with each of the leaders of those communities saying what can we do to really showcase um, one um, who we are and then also retell and stories and make sure those memories are alive. I, I kind of made it my mission for this particular young lady and their family to say whatever I can do to help anything you know even as it was simple as as donating my personal items and clothing um, or furniture uh, whatever the case may be and um, and since stepping this everyone that I've met I've done several events now where it has put me in, in, in front of these young refugees and I share my story over and over again because they come visit they look at me and they have no idea no idea that I was once in in their same shoes you know they're thinking oh you have such a nice house now and you speak English so well there's no way that you were once a refugee or have the same struggles. So I really, really make it a point to tell my story to these young individuals to show them and motivate them that absolutely, um, but it's up to you. Absolutely you can have a better life, but it's absolutely up to you to make that work. And, it, and it's the work ethic and the motivation that's gonna get you there.